We've had a bit of Cheltenham themed content throughout the day, updates on various contenders, obviously in light of the news about Constitution Hill earlier on today. Lisa's given us four horses to watch out for next week and now it's my turn to walk the plank. Four horses who won't be that short, won't be Ballyburn short I suppose, or maybe the Champion Chase horse short. <laughs> but Corbett's Cross, Icara Len, Tupo and Gidley Park are mine. Corbett's Cross in the National Hunt Chase, so a bit of crossover with Lisa there. Icara Len in the Pretemps final handicap hurdle, Tupo in the Stayers hurdle, and Gidley Park now, his target is undecided, but I'm hoping he might maybe line up in the Albert Bartlett novice hurdle. I think that might present him with his best chance of a victory. We spoke about Corbett's Cross earlier on. If you weren't with us, Lisa came up at four and Corbett's Cross was in there as well. The National Hunt Chase is his target, Lisa. That was confirmed a little while ago. If you're nitpicking, it wasn't exactly the ideal preparation. We'll come to that in just a second with that run at Ferry House. But his previous effort here at Leopard Santa Christmas, we'll have another look at that second behind Grange Clare West. That certainly, I think, suggests he's the horse to beat in this. Grange Clare West, sadly out for the season, but he had some good horses behind him this day, including Flooring Porter. And to me, whether it's hurdles or fences, his form stacks up. His jumping has been crabbed, but I think it's safe rather than there's anything wrong with it. What about you? Yeah, I do agree, Gary. Look, I think, to be perfectly honest, he wasn't the winner on the day uh, for, for this race, but I, I think there's plenty of positives to take from it. And I think he's a horse, as I mentioned before, he's bags of ability. He's a lot of talent, and I think he just has a bit of class about him. Um, like, I, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, I, I think he's a grade one horse, and uh, obviously that was a grade one that we've seen, but I think he's capable capabilities of being solid grade one horse going forward. And, uh, yeah, I, I think he's definitely the pick of the National Hunt Chase for me mm. as well. Another of Lisa's picks was found a 50, who's on course for the Arkle Trophy, and he's a great one winner of offences. Now, Corbett's Cross was good enough to beat him in a hurdle race, graded mm -hmm. hurdle race at Nace around over about this time miles. last year, over just shy of two miles. So he's not short of pace, but I don't think he'll have any problem with the longer trip, Lisa, do you? I don't think so mm. either, no. Look, he's we've seen so far how versatile he is, and obviously we watched him in the VT earlier in the day when he, when he did run out at the last in the Albert Bartlett, and who's to know what the results could have been on the day but I think he's a very versatile horse and I don't think the trip will be any problem for him either. I did mention it probably wasn't the ideal warm up for him at Fairy House last time it was a small field conditions chase this day and Derek O'Connor who's going to ride him at Cheltenham we expect was in the saddle he was just pottering around at the back of a forerunner field Lisa and I thought doing everything pretty much at his ease here they weren't going any great gallop in what were pretty demanding conditions run wild Fred up top here with the eventual winner, Velvet Elvis, who I think was making his debut for Henry de Bromhead this day. More experienced horses than Corbett's Cross, and as I say, his jumping I thought was perfectly adequate. Now it ends, I suppose, unceremoniously for him when he jumps into the back of Run Wild Fred, but I think the fact that he didn't fall himself would mean that's less of a worry for me. I You'd have more experience, obviously, of horses falling or how their confidence might be affected, but would it be much of a concern? No, I don't think mm. so. Look, it's not the end result that ultimately Connections would have wanted on the day, but there was somewhat, I think it might be, you no, know, it might be a couple of fences further on um, when Run Royal Fred and him obviously collide in midair. Um, but obviously, look, it's I, I don't think it'll harm his confidence by any means. And um, obviously, Derek O'Connor was on board this day, hoping to get a feel for him going forward for the National Hunt Chase. And uh, I don't, look, I, I think, albeit it wasn't the result that we wanted, you can just see obviously Run Wild Fred and the Gig and Ten Colours on front and Corbett's cross in behind who sh sh Run Wild Fred just puts the brakes on, doesn't he? Yeah, and then Corbett's goes to, cross goes to jump it really well and lands on top of him. Exactly, and one goes to his right, one goes slightly, fractionally to his left as well, and there's a collision mid-air, and obviously his feet are taken from underneath him as he lands. And look, it's it's not it's not an ideal prep, but I don't look, I don't think it'll harm his confidence by any means. Yeah, I'm sure he'll have had a school over a few fences in the, at the very least in the meantime. And news just emerging the last day or two. Nice touch by Cheltenham as well, Lisa, that the race is going to be named in honour of the late Maureen Mullins this year. The top two in the market, Embassy Gardens and Corbett's Cross 
both trained by members of the Mullins family, so every chance of the fairy tale result, but we're firmly in the Corbett's Cross camp, I think. Right? Yeah, look, it's, it's a lovely touch, but uh, for me, I'm definitely in the Corbett's Cross camp. Yeah, we can definitely agree on something anyway, guys. Definitely. I'm hoping you're <laughs> not going to rubbish my other three. Anyway, we'll come on to them now in just a second. The next to them is a horse called Ikara Len, who's trained by Willie Mullins, another one owned by J.P. McManus who is set to line up in the Pretemps Handicap Hurdle final on Thursday afternoon. This is a horse who ran very well in some big two-mile handicap hurdles over the past 12, 18 months. He was placed at the Winter Festival at Ferry House. I thought he ran a really good race in the Galway Hurdle last year, Lisa, as well. And then he was pulled out later on in the week for a valuable race over two and three quarter miles thereabouts. And ran well in that too. He qualified for this at Aintree at the, I think it was the beginning of November or late October, and seems as though he's been put on ice since then. He's at the back of the field as we joined him here, and this was one of the days where the low sun unfortunately intervened at Aintree, and there was no jumping up the home straight. But it was job done in terms of qualifying, and I like the fact as well he's been given a bit of a break since then, because he had actually been quite busy before this. He's run well fresh in the past, and to me, he's on a mark that he really ought to be able to make his presence felt off. Yeah, off a mark of 142. He's another horse, obviously. Um, I think we've seen him previously running quite well in, in graded company as a juvenile as well. And this was his first try at this trip, Gary. And I think he really showed himself to good effect. I, I think, obviously, it was as you said, job done to qualify in the first four for the Pertems and the fact that he's a uh, been given a break, comes here fresh. He's run well fresh in the past as well. And um, I think he's got every chance um, for Willie Mullins, JP McManus, who just have so much ammunition for the festival next week as well. But I think there's there's plenty, there's plenty of upside to this horse. Definitely agree. Yeah, the owners have Shantree House in there as well, who I suppose is better known as a chaser, but he might be on a reasonable mark over hurdles as well. But I just prefer this horse's profile. I think he, he potentially is on an upward curve, whereas Chantry House, maybe after the issues he's had over the years, might just be a little bit more of a question mark over him. So that's my number two pick, Ikara Len, in the Pretemps Handicap Hurdle on the Thursday. Also on the Thursday, the stayers are no prizes for originality here. And if, as seems increasingly likely, Gordon Elliott telling us earlier on, he's keen to run Irish Point in the Champion Hurdle now that Constitution Hill is out, well, Tiupo might end up a shortish price, Lisa, but. To me, this is the standout horse in the Stayers hurdle. I'm not sure that the race necessarily is going to be as strong as we thought it might be at one stage earlier mm. on the season when the French horse who fell by the wayside was in there and so too, more to the point, was Irish point. But we're going to have a look at Tupu's win in the Hatton's Grace hurdle at Fairy House in December, which is the only time we've seen him mm. this season. Yeah, look, obviously it's by design. Connections have decided to give him a little break in between and freshen him up altogether. But I thought this was really good by Tiapu Impere pass on his inside as well. I love the way he grinds it out. And look, we've seen him, he won the Galmoy last year before he went on to run in the Stairs last year as well. And a lot of people have said that he potentially should have won the Stairs last year. He run, ran into a little bit of interference with uh, Dasher, the Drasher. Uh, and look, I think, He's had a lovely prep. He's in great form. Um, I've seen him plenty at home, Gary, and I have to say he's definitely a standout horse. That's exactly what I want to hear. OK, so that's Tupo. And the final one that I've gone for is Gidley Park, trained by Harry Fryer. I was really impressed by what this guy did at Cheltenham last time out. He won in terrific style at Newbury previously. Now, he does have the option of both uh, Bering Bingham and the Albert Bartlett. I just thought the way he won this day, Lisa, he got himself out of a bit of a hole. Nicky Henderson's horse there in the blue and yellow, I think it's lucky speed, kind of half blindsided him a bit, I thought, when he went for home. And I love the way Gidley Park was able to peg him back and he's strong through the line. I think he'll be every bit as effective if he does go up to three miles. What, what do you reckon? I think so too, yeah. Look, he's stepping up in trip for the first time and I do like the way he hit the line, which he showed himself to really good effect and the fact that um, the way he hit the line so well, I think would suggest that he'll have no problem. He's a likely raced horse and I, I think he's got a touch of class about him too. I think Connections potentially are going to wait and see how things shape up till a little bit closer to the time. I mean, we're still in the dark and we will be for a while longer, I'd imagine, about the likes of Ballyburn. 
getting emails today suggesting bookmakers feel he could now run in the two and a half mile race Lisa when it looked like it was going to be the supreme nobody knows is probably the truth of it isn't it no that's exactly it and look um, I'm sure Willie Mullins will leave it to the 11th hour to let everyone know and um, maybe look maybe maybe he is a horse that line up in, in the uh, Bering Bingham I'm not too sure for, for me if I had the choice I think I'd send him to the bearing Bingham to be mm. honest um, obviously Mystical Power is in the Supreme and uh, Tully Hill as well I'm sure Paul Downland would be hoping they'd be split up mm. Just going back to Gidley Park I think if the bearing Bingham was running the new track it'd be a grand fit for him but maybe just the sharp track and two and a half miles I don't know maybe the Albert Bartlett but then again if we have testing round that might Force connections into a bit of a rethink. Anyway, just to recap then on my four, they are Corbett's Cross in the National and Chase, firmly with Lisa there, Ikar Len in the Pretemps Networks final, the handicap hurdle on the Thursday, Tupo in the Stayers hurdle, hoping hoping he can make amends for last year's defeat. And Gidley Park, whose target is still up in the air, but hopefully might pitch up in the Albert Bartlett novice hurdle if all the ducks are in a row on the Friday. Watch live racing now on RacingTV.com.